Okay, so the next speaker is Leslie Weaver from it's a master's student from the University of Trenton. Going to um, talk about concurrent persistent functional languages. Uh, so I did this work as my master thesis. And uh, oh, so, yeah, these are my supervisors. So uh, well, uh, you can notice the persistent language or which is a functional language and which supports concurrency of transactions. So well first a uh, little background. Uh, so the idea of transaction is we have some global state and a transaction is basically some collection of operations on the state. And we want this operation to be executed atomically, so that means we want to either execute all our transactions or none of them. Uh, so after each transaction we want the state to be in a consistent state. And we want the transactions to be isolated from one another. So this is uh, formally say well we want them to be executed serially and recover and we want recoverability for serializability says should uh, seem as if we execute them after each other. And uh, well once we execute the transaction the effect has to be uh, durable. It means uh, if there's some crashes, then we also want the effect to be durable, so we have to do something about that. So some example of transaction processing systems are, for example, banking, the computer situation, computerization, websites, also, for example, eBay or stuff like that. Uh, our main challenge here is, well, we really have to support our many thousands of users who all want very quick uh, response to their transactions. And, uh, well, it's not like we have to process correctly at the end, and we want to have all of data. So, currently, most systems are always supplied for most small systems. So, we have a database management system. Uh, well, so it's a much handle a large amount of data, and it provides some query interface work with the data and it provides a lot of basics for transactions. So essentially it's, it is a transaction processing system, a fairly general one, but you wouldn't want to use it in practice uh, in direct terms. So, well, so well, one of the problems with current database management systems is that while they do support the active properties, most of them do not support isolation uh, completely, so only partially because it's uh, it's very expensive to do it uh, uh, with full serializable isolation. So, in this architect, you usually have to see some application because it's quite an especially large world and you can impose additional security constraints because it's, well, you, you could just give uh, a user the password to the database, but you wouldn't want to do it in practice. So, you usually put some application on it to try imagine. So, but it's all forms and implementing the system system that well, application and database management system have different type systems, so there's an impedance mismatch. Uh, another problem is well, you have a serial interface here, so normally when you want to execute a section that consists process of multiple queries, you will just uh, enter them serially in the database. So that's not optimal because you could potentially execute them in parallel. Uh, well, in this case, we also have a distributed system because both systems are well, in a different process, so they could feel independently, so, which makes it, uh, well, it's, it's complicated in the application. And with, well, there's some other problems, so, so, so you can do some application effects, and it's also a difficult to So, so we can have to put this to well, so a persistent language. Which well, it solves most of these problems already because you don't have a distributed system anymore, so you have the same type system. But, uh, well, there's no direct interface between the system because it's, it's in the same system. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'll just uh, tell how it works. So, this in theory, uh, so this is based on work by Paul Trinder. So, a pretty old work. So, the idea is we have a transaction well, function, takes a well, state produces a new state that has some observable results of the transaction. Uh, 
So if you have a stream of those, uh, those actions, like this, uh, you can execute them on an initial state and get a stream of results. So this, oh, you can see that the picture is like this. So the transaction you put the state in, the next two states in about, press into the next sense transaction, this is about. So, well, this, this, this module is well, it's obviously uh, atomic and isolated because well, we have well, this one condition that it doesn't have to be total functions. And, uh, well, consistency can be enforced, well, it has to be enforced by API like transactions because uh, well, there's no other mechanism to enforce it. And, uh, and the system can be implemented relatively easily because it's, it's, it's durable. Uh, so, well, you might ask, well, what about concurrency? Because it's not a system, this is just a serial execution of transactions. Well, here's an example. So, this is a, it's a graph, it's, it's a state, it represents some set of numbers. So, let's say we have, well, the transaction it creates a new state, which so decrements all the values per one. And we have another transaction which once in a while this is a new state contains a value set. So the idea is we can put this state lazily to get conversion between this transaction and this transaction. And the idea is, well, so we want to know this, so we compute this state. And the idea is, well, we only compute the path that we need to, to get this answer. So what's basically happening is that this transaction is being executed concurrently with this transaction because we don't have to execute this transaction completely to get the result. So, uh, well, imagine if you have a file large tree, well, it, it only takes a few different steps to get one lead, but it takes a lot of different steps to complete the whole graph. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, basically this idea, uh, is probably, you can implement a, a, a well, system language, well, this is only models so of parts. So we have, uh, well, the model is called, we have states, which are sort of binding. So we have uh, name is an expression. And the transaction is almost the same, but it's the variables and the names. And for the variables we use, uh, we have current state variables, which refer to the current state. Well, it's actually always to the context of the current state and the next state. So you can refer to the current state, uh, as well as the next state, and we have a special variable for the result of the transaction. Uh, that is some example. So, for example, with the state, we have some binding names to a list, files and blocks. Oh, and we could have transaction which is well, instead of a new name, date, and to this name, and assigns that to the next state's name. And we also want to know what's what's in the next state name. So when we compute this result, we get this. And after the transaction, we have this state. So we can also put uh, well, functions in the state. So we can have data out of the functions. So this is just a function to do the length of the list in the state. And then we can have a transaction which, well, which uses the, the function in the state to put the length of the name. So, well, this is basically the language we, we developed, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about how we implemented this. So, the main goal is to have for this implementation. I want to be able to execute transactions concurrently, and I want to store states in a consistent memory. So, uh, some work has been done already in this kind of language, so this is a far sign of mostly new work. So, small view of what the implementation entails is uh, well, we want to interpret transactions uh, and not recompile them because we really want to use it interactively. Uh, we want to create new bindings dynamically so that we can just yeah, these are new bindings and when we don't use them anymore, they're collected. Because that, well, we want to execute transactions in parallel and we want to store state in precision memory. And I think that the prototyping, yeah, probably. Like that. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Uh, so, well, the basis of the implementation is, uh, is the graph induction. So, I'm not sure 
show how many money that you are uh, familiar with that. So to show how few is involved. It's very intended in this location. So the idea is partly running the template. And uh, there, there is additionally a reduction graph in which a lot of reduction takes place. And if we if there is an application which which uh, which, is, which, really, which requires a binding and we instantiate the template. So it's usually a super combinator uh, binding with the uh, stack of the leader. Okay. So if you want to support uh, bindings to be created dynamically. Uh, we have to make a little adaptation because the problem is here is to have a binding graph we tended but this is usually in the global map. So if we have new bindings we have to add it to the map or we have to we might have to remove the bindings from the map. We have to ensure that our binding is a unique name. So instead of keeping the global map with something else, we uh, resolve all the references to the template statically. So well, on the paper there's an old reason for that. What is that? The result then is that all templates are basically anonymous, they don't have a name anymore, and when they're not used anymore, they can be browsed by. Uh, so, now, uh, another thing is we want to form uh, really reduction using multiple tracks. You can also already do concurrent uh, evaluation of transactions through the well, lazy evaluation, as I showed. But if you want to reduce multiple transactions to the read the state concurrently, they will reduce the, the the state with multiple threats, so we have to ensure that it's correct. So one idea is to just use say uh, use a standard parallel graph reducer, but uh, come up with something. Well, what is another approach? So I'm going to discuss So uh, just to make sure to be clear, uh, the people asked uh, lots and lots of difference between concurrent and parallel. So in this sense, I'm talking about the current when we execute transactions uh, and to ensure that they do not depend on the so that you can delete them. And with parallelism, we mean we actually use multiple uh, processors for you. So the idea I have for uh, the graph prediction is uh, we, we have uh, a phase on what you call result sharing and randomization. So the idea is uh, if you, we have a fixed set of reduction threads which, uh, which share results between one another, two results share results, with, and to distribute loads among them, we randomize the paths in the reduction graph. So there is a, uh, that's will be in different parts of the graph most of the time, and then when they are in the same path, they, or when they visit a path with another set that's already visited, then they will choose the results from the other set. So to implement this, we have created a lot of <coughs> result sharing nodes. Uh, they are inserted before every read X. And um, they have pointers either points to the read X or to the result of the read X. And so when you reduce, you just update the point. But to ensure that this, that this is done correctly, we have, uh, we have to make sure that, that the terms we share uh, uh, or the sharing is maintained even in concurrent setting because you can have two threads which concurrently use the same relays and both get a result which you have to ensure that only one of those results is used, otherwise you lose sharing. So we well in papers and an uh, algorithm to do that. And well, to ensure that threads go into different parts of the call we just uh, to, so what we do is we reduce strict function elements and run more. So Plus, then uh, well, you need both elements so you can some more stuff and do that. Do that. Do that uh, uh, turn them more. So, this uh, some preliminary results. We only tested this for for uh, two very simple programs, just main implementation of our work. But it's also because the main goal was not to implement the graph, part of the graph reducer, but to implement the same process. I thought it might be interesting. So, this is actually a quasi a clone machine, but it has it's, um, four, four processor nodes. So, you, uh, you see, if you use one node in the previous half linear. And, well, so, so this program is very heavily data dependent. You see that uh, the 
Zelžovs, Romūtus, Turkičius, Kalinašas, Žinas, Lovis, Uh, 
and all in the insurance really problem for the state of Washington. And, uh, all right, so uh, uh, we also have a combined approach. So what we do is we split the heap into two parts, unreduced parts and reduced parts. For the reduced, we use the snapshot thing. For the reduced part, we lost structures. And then basically, what the advantages of both systems, so we can split on computation and state large and memory, and we can have fast recovery. The details of that are in the, in the paper. And how we saw the need to So, uh, so conclusions is uh, we have, uh, well, we present a functional language for image processing uh, with a prototype implementation system. I have to say, we have not implemented all the methods that are described for persistence, only the, the snapshotting, oh, only the, uh, the, the, the snapshotting approach without components and the reduction and the learning. So, well, we have all seen So, the future work is, uh, well, if you want to look at how to resolve this penalty, uh, you want to investigate the implementation of the storage mechanism, so you see this one. Um, also, we, we, we just implemented the standards, and we've not really seen it, how it can be used in practice, so it's also a future work. And at the moment, we, we use uh, one reduction charge for every transaction. We want to investigate the kind of fixed number of prediction shots. So, now that's it. Questions? So, in your parallel randomized reduction, yeah. um, do you have a mechanism for guaranteeing that you're going to um, force something completely? So, if you, if you just pick a random path, yeah. And you see that it's already been you know, reduced, I'll get a grant again. But it seems like you've only got a probabilistic guarantee that uh, if you need both arguments to plus, that you'll actually eventually force them. Yes, so the idea is uh, if you look at the first function, so then the, so the first time you just pick a random one, the next time you pick the other one. So uh, basically, what I do is I reduce the arguments from left to right to right to left. So I want to random results. In the end, you, you all do this. So I guess what my question then would be, can you use that to get more parallelism so that you're not, with probability, working on the same, you know? Well, I actually, in my I, I don't really do it randomly. I, I do it uh, alternatively. So uh, first step for that, and first step for the right. So actually, I try to distribute it. But then, uh, there's actually a, a lot of possibilities that you can do it uh, I guess that's a lot of work to do More questions? So, uh, in the of rapid reduction, why can't um, none of the techniques of the of rapid reduction that exist uh, can be used to solve the problem? Uh, I think you could just use a, a normal follow of rapid reduction, it's just uh, or the work on the side of this component in the end of well, I can mean, that this as well, and it be interesting to investigate this as well. So, um, but there's still a problem if you want to, uh, how do I say it? So, the, if you use a normal work, you probably won't have a problem with uh, complete, because you can use quality reduction, but I'm not completely sure what happens if you. If you, if you do a concurrent reduction, you can assume you just do that steals work from all the different threats. So it's still a lot to investigate. Okay. Any more questions? No? Okay. Nice